Uh, start with this, so Michael can take it back. Stick it over there. But um, this uh, was one of my pieces. I, I was experimenting with it. It's got a turn bottom. I'll put it down so you can get it on the camera. Camera's a little slow. My daughter said it looks like uh, Mickey Mouse. So uh, the idea, I just wanted to, the idea was an experiment, really. And turning, I think, is fun to experiment. You take an odd design or shape a piece of wood and see what you can make out of it. My objective here was just to keep the bark on, make it thin, and get it hauled out all over the bottom and have, have a balance to it. Uh, the finish is seal -a cell It's a natural uh, penetrating oil. It's a tongue oil based. Steel wool and then buffed on a, just a cloth buffing wheel to get a nice satin finish. So, uh, just to give you an idea of an experimental piece. How long does that take you to do? Um, well, I dried it thoroughly. I had it dried to about 6% moisture. I had it roughed out to an inch thick and then dried it to about 6% and then I took it down thin. Mm -hmm. So, probably eight hours or so. Nice. Okay. This is a piece by Reed Jones. Uh, the wood is gorgeous. Initially, you see how striking the wood is. Ambrosia maple. The design, I think, is creative, really creative. Uh, he's got a lot of interesting contours in there. The finish is gorgeous. Took a lot of time on the finish. The finish looks like it's got a, maybe an oil with a wax. Um, wax finish, absolutely beautiful finish. Um, the shape is an artist's preference. You see all kinds of different shapes. You know, I make things that people may not say are aesthetically pleasing. Uh, this is an artist's preference, and I think it works. I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting artistic piece. Um, so thickness-wise, it's balanced. It's got a balanced weight, it's not thick in any one spot. So I think that, that's really a pretty piece. Um, this is box elder. I love box elder because you can get some red that filters through the box elder. This one um, has a turn base, which is really nice, beautiful, proportional base. And what's kind of neat here, he uh, decided to keep the bark. So he's got a bark inclusion. Is an artistic point, and the rim. When I was working with a Hawaiian turner years ago, he used to say, "Bring the pe bring the edge up to a fine edge." He was an old Hawaiian, Japanese, Samoan. He'd say, "Bring it up to a fine edge." So what I'd like to see here is this edge. Even though it might be thicker down below, you have a nice edge. So uh, this is oriented right. I think the proportions are beautiful. Beautiful curve. Uh, this is at the right spot, so that's a pretty piece. This is a, uh, let's see, piece by Merrill. Merrill is a very accomplished wood turner. Pretty wood. Um, I, I think it was, what's that? Oh, boy, is it? Black maple or black maple? Black maple. Okay, gorgeous wood. Uh, it does have a, I think he dealt with it fine, it's a crack or blemish that's filled, which works okay. Looks like it was finished where it wasn't fully dry, possibly, because it did move. The finished piece has some movement in it, but Merrill took the time to make some nice decorative rings around it, a uh, turn bottom, and a gorgeous finish, so uh, that's a beautiful artistic piece. This is one of mine. Uh, Norm and Greg and I cut some pecan a while ago, and we had some fun all day cutting pecan, which is challenging to turn because it's so volatile. When it dries, it just warps like crazy. It can crack, so to dry it is challenging. But this is a pecan. The objective here was just to keep the bark on. I wanted to, actually this warped. In the drying process, this warped to the point where I almost couldn't get a finished piece out of it. I had this much remaining 
and I barely got the finished round contour on it, so because it warped like a football, it just crazy. But uh, I wanted to capture the bark, which is really rugged, and it's cool when you keep the bark on. I like it when the bark is equal thickness all the way around, so it's the same thickness down here as it is up here. And I like the base to come right down to the foot and have the foot oriented about the right proportion to the piece. So and it's cool when you can capture some of the heartwood in the, in the design to show the contrast between the sapwood and the heartwood and the base with the ring. Um, and it's fun to have a, the bottom that's finished. And we talk about it, taking the time to do a turn bottom. Pretty little piece. I don't know what wood that is. It's uh, bird's eye. Okay. Bird's eye maple. It's very thin and fine. Nice design. It's kind of a kind of an OG. He did this with an audience too at the fair. First demo. Okay. Uh, yeah, very <laughs> very detailed. He's got inside edging inside. It's beautiful. Um, I think the base works. It's a gorgeous little artistic piece. I mean, that's an absolutely stunning piece. So finish nicely, nice natural finish. It's beautiful. Not only that, but he had to do it with a random cannon going it's off. Very, every oh five God, or six God. <laughs> it's very, it's very thin too. Uh, this looks like spalted maple. I guess. So. Spalted maple. I think so. Okay. Uh, Three and a half practice holes. Okay. So these are practice holes? Okay, all of mine are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you saved that one, right? Uh, that uh, could be a coin or a key holder now, but it was almost a plug. Okay. <laughs> work, a little, work a little bit, save yeah. a little bit. You know, <laughs> There's virtue in experimentation. Right? A little bit. But it's, um, it's fun to experiment with shape, different shapes and edges. and. Hard edges versus soft edges, curves versus flat. That's kind of cool to try. Uh, it's got a nice curve here. I'll put, put one of these down. Basically, the wall. I mean, the wood is stunning. Um, it's either tundra or tundra or walnut. Okay. Yeah. And to use spalted wood is fun. The color in spalted wood is gorgeous. See, there's so many opportunities artistically to capture that spalting. It's cool. So good, good small little pieces, experimental pieces. Uh, uh, this is one of mine. It was again. I just, I just like shapes, and I like to experiment with shapes. Uh, this was just a square block I got from Mike, and uh, I just thought it'd be fun to try to keep the square orientation. Turn bottom, and it was super curly, you know, with that red color through it, so... Uh, and just the curves, to have the curves connect in a smooth flow. This is a beautiful finish. I forget who talked to me about this. I'm sorry, Michael McCurley. Michael McCurley is working on his finishing and sanding. Um, that's really nice. Michael took the time to turn the bottom. Beautiful curve. Has a good eye for the curve. Nice rim treatment. Beautiful choice of wood, ambrosia maple. And that's, that's a very nice piece, decorative piece. It's a good balance. A little uh, weed pot or twig pot. Um, it's a fun, fun little piece. We'll turn bottom on there. Took the time to engrave it or write his name on the bottom. Um, name on the bottom shelf too. Oh, on the bottom shelf. This is a piece by Brett Olson. 
maple, walnut, bloodwood, 1,261 pieces. So I can't imagine the time involved to put a piece together like that, but it, it does have a turn bottom. This is Brett Olson. Very patient person. So uh, that take, that's a real, uh, takes, takes a lot of patience. That's absolutely stunning. Uh, you just see a beautiful curve. This, that's a, right on the money. It's got some laminated uh, walnut on the top to solidify the piece. Also solid walnut on the bottom and the decoration in the center. It's gorgeous. Um, we have an olive piece, olive burl, gorgeous wood, turn bottom, just a nice basic bowl out of a beautiful piece of wood. It's cool when you can capture bark inclusion. It just adds character to the piece artistically, I think. It's pretty and absolutely stunning piece of wood. So it's fun if you can find a piece of wood like that. It's just that's really exciting. Is that yours? No, uh, this is uh, Mike, Mike, Mark, 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 yes. Oh, hey, Mark, it's beautiful. I like your base, too. It's, it's, it's good, perfect shape, Can perfect size. Can you stay that? The cracks, I think? Um, um, I think the cracks, the lighter part, it's filled, but, um, so I guess, the, yeah, that crack would stay a lot of this has a prominent foot, which is nice actually. It gives that piece lift. It's a very thin, fine piece. It's light, it's balanced, well balanced. The cherry? Uh, pardon me? Cherry? The wood? Cherry, it looks like cherry wood, yeah. Again, Mark did this one. So, Mark, you're doing some beautiful work. That's a stunning piece. Um, the curve is gorgeous. You have a beautiful curve. Um, the only, if I were to, this were me and it was my preference, you have a square, very narrow, thin edge, but I might bring that up to a, actually just a fine edge versus squaring that off. It works either way. It's an interesting point. I'd love to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Just maybe experiment a little bit with bringing it up to a fine edge. Keep your thickness the same, though. I always thought, I always thought that if you brought it up to a fine edge, it's it. That doesn't look, um, it's not definite, you know, there, there wasn't a meaning to it. Right. It just sort of happened, and the bowl can be thick, but then, you know, sanding, I think, it's easy to end up with that, with that exactly. fine Exactly. So what I want the squareness to say, this is what I want. Right. This is okay. Well, that's, that's a preference, an art, artist's preference. I usually take a piece of sandpaper yeah, through the sanding good. process, and I'll just squeeze, you know, just squeeze here, and I'll just bring it up to a point, fine edge. That's a beautiful piece. Um, I have a couple of very interesting pieces here. Artistic, heavy, there's a lot of interest in weight. You know, a solid piece of burl with the bark fully intact. It is heavy and thick, but that's, that's an artist's preference as well. Uh, he found a gorgeous piece of wood and... Who did that? Um, Good job. Mr. Baker. Mark. Mark that Baker. wood came from less than a half mile here. So here, uh, a collection of two very interesting ar ar architectural pieces. Um, again, artist preference. They accidentally put together. <laughs> this, one fits, this one fits in there. <laughs> so, that's actually how you brought it in. Yeah, well there's a, there's a lift that matches, there's a, 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 there's at some point there's a, a, a divot in one and a divot in another, and they can be turned into by the <laughs> Quarter of a turn that the two down parts will line up. Somebody tell the new guy that he planned it that way. Oh, <laughs> planned it. Well, nobody knows what it is that's not a woodworker. They're thinking, I have what? No that's right. Yeah. You got to tell him you planned it that way. I mean, yeah. How cool is that? That's, that's really cool. Well, that was the, that was the same spot. It was the only way I could cut it off the tree. Wait, I wasn't sure if these were attached when you first brought them in. I thought, I wonder if that's attached in there. But um, it's yeah, interesting. It's, you know, mark. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to dress these up a little bit, you could cove out the base, the bottom, maybe put a little foot, 
bring this foot in a little bit and create a little little lesser diameter foot on there? Well, I already sold it once and got back to the location this time. This is Michael McCurley's masterpiece of <laughs> coning. This is a real art, and I uh, hope you guys take advantage of the breakout session. What, what tool was it, McNaughton or what? McNaughton, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Michael's a master at the coning. I actually did a demo for our group. Um, look at the detail on that. It's poplar. Look at the detail on that. You know, the rim. How much of it's in your lungs? The treatment, the base. It's got a little foot on there. Inside is nice. How many did you get out of it? Five. So would you have like a cup and a half of shavings? <laughs> <laughs> More than you would this, think. You know, people think of poplar is junk wood in a way. It's kind of practice wood because it's soft and rarely gives you any figure. But he actually found some poplar with some red through it. This is pretty cool. Let's see that. So he's got a pretty piece of wood and he's coned it out. You get one, two, three, four, five pieces out of it. A beautiful curve. Michael's got a great eye for curve. That's gorgeous. I took the time to do a, a rim treatment on there. That's really nice. And the weight is good. It's a nice, nice feeling ball. Good substantial piece. And are these for cr critique? Yeah. Okay. What are they? Yeah. yeah what are these things? They're boppers. No, they're yeah. stool legs. I'm, stool legs, okay. Stool legs. Okay. Right. okay. So we have uh, spindle turning. None of them are the same. I know what those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, it's an interesting area. stool. It's hard to see the beads different. I, I would not put that on the turntable unless you stand it on end. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, beads and coves, good spindle practice, and really pretty. Nice wood. Yeah, if you want to learn how to do a stool right up, teach you a class in October here. Okay. A workshop on stools. Some other ones, the spalt. It's fun when you can capture capture spalting in there. It's fun <clears> color. <throat> There's another one that has some interesting uh, design features. <laughs> How big was the piece of wood you started with? The tree I cut down was about that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I think that's all we have. Is, was well, is this one right? Like one second. Um, yeah. And the pens. Correct. Oh, and the pens, okay. The one that is the loudest, I was trying to blow tie axis piece down there. Oh, okay. It's got the gold paint in it. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one? No, okay. This one? Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it. it says gold paint, uh, multi-axis spindle work. And again, the experimentation is fun. Just try things. See what you get. You know, try to get an interesting outcome. Multi-axis spindle. That's cool. This is Tracy's uh, piece. Tracy's doing some interesting work. Tracy always puts a nice base uh, bottom on it. Um, this is a good basic little piece. It's fun. It looks like a spray lacquer of some kind. Wouldn't take the lacquer, so I'm not working on the problem. Okay. <laughs> Let's so, get you started. The maker's fair. Yes. It's got a huge uh, artist side diameter. It's not round. Again, the finish is artist preference. This is shiny and glossy, you know, and some people prefer a satin natural, more of a natural finish, but either way, it's artist preference. We have some pens. It's really pretty pens. It's like gorgeous pens. And these are blanks, I guess. Yeah, this is a blank. Anyway, we have a lot of people in the club that do pens, beautiful pens. And a uh, little pen set, I guess, for that one. So, anyway, it's like um, Ebony or Coco Bolo. Ebony and Holly. Okay, Ebony and Holly. With the Holly contrasting the black, which is gorgeous. It's cool when you can contrast a, a light wood and a dark wood. Yeah. Those are really pretty. Okay, have we got the one picture. more? Yes, yeah, the picture. 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 Hold on. The picture. Down the Hold on for the picture. Oh, okay, the mushroom. Oh, okay. 
Um, here's a um, berry order. What is it? Uh, it's a Maryland. Is that an urn? It's an urn. It's my father's cremation urn. Okay. Wow, that's pretty. There's a finial on top. Uh, beautiful turn, lid, base, um, inlay. Does that inlay go all the way through? Or just, it just goes in a eighth of an inch or so, sixteenth? Okay. okay. So, uh, beautiful inlay. So that's really pretty. And then we have, lastly, we have a mushroom. Cool mushroom. Okay, just an artistic piece with a mushroom structure on top. Um, that's like nice curves. That's a beautiful curve and a little OG, tall OG curve. That's pretty. Turn bottom, turn base. I think that's it. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir.